sometimes errors happen in the running of a program, not because of anything bad in our code or a mistake in our code, but because of bad user input. And errors are often referred to as exceptions. So we can sometimes handle exceptions. Let me demonstrate how an exception might occur with this simple little program here. We have in Visual Studio a Windows app form which has a text box of txt number. We're asking the user to enter a number and I put a default value of one, two, three in there. And then a button called double it or btn double. Let's take a look at the code by double clicking on the double it button. And all we're doing is we're creating a variable called my number as a double type. We're using double.parse to convert the string of the text of that text box into a double value to assign it to my number. Then we're going to have another variable called twice, also a double type, which takes my number and multiplies it by two. And then a message box that shows the value doubled is, and we use twice.toString, and my title is value doubled. I'm going to run this. So when I click double it with one, two, three, I'm told the value doubled is two, four, six. If I put a five in here, the value doubled is 10. But what if the user does something like ABC? and then they click double it, it's gonna crash the program. In this case, running in the IDE, it takes us to the problem in the code. But if we had distributed this, it would actually crash the application, it would close. So it says here, the problem is exception unhandled. So we're gonna look at how to handle that exception so that if this occurs, it doesn't crash the program. I'm gonna go back to my code and one way to handle exceptions is to use something called a try catch. So we use the word try with a set of curly brackets. And then following that, the phrase catch. And catch can take a parameter of type exception. So we can actually find out what kind of error occurred or what kind of exception occurred. And I'm going to call that exception a variable name of ex. I could have called it anything I wanted as long as I kept to the variable uh, name conventions, and another set of curly brackets. So what I want to try goes in these curly brackets, and if there's an error that occurs, then I can decide what I want to do in the face of that error. So I'm going to take our three lines of code that was written earlier. I'm going to cut those and paste those into the try. And then for the catch, let's show a message box. And what I want for the prompt or for the string in that message box is my variable ex, for, or the exception, and it has a property called message. It will tell us what the error was. Sometimes those messages are a little bit cryptic, but at least it gives us some idea. And then for the title, let's just say a problem occurred. Do my semicolon. And now I'm going to run this again. So when I double one, two, three, I get two, four, six. If I double 500, I'm told the value doubles a thousand. But if I put in that ABC that we did earlier that crashed the program, and now when I click double it, it doesn't crash. Instead, it brings up our message box. This is what's happening in the catch because we, we encountered an exception. And we get our message box with the title of a problem occurred. And then here's our message of the exception. Input string was not in a correct format. That is how we can handle exceptions when we're concerned that something might go wrong.